So next in our series of panels, uh, sorry, keynotes, um, we will hear about how to quantify the quantum leap. And I'm very happy to introduce um, for, uh, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Egypt. Please welcome on stage the CEO of Accelerate Capital, Khaled Bashara. I wish I'd have a video that effect, I'm sure. Okay, so pleasure to be here and thank you all for wasting your time with me. Uh, when I was asked by Rise Up to come and make a speech, um, I wanted to take a very different angle. Not because I'm a pessimist, because entrepreneurs are optimists by nature, but because I felt that there is so much hype that sometimes you have to quantify the hype. And that's why we had this debate with Jihad and like, look, I don't want to be the guy who will run on anybody's parade because I think the ecosystem today is phenomenally better than when we started. We started in 93 with a software company called Microlabs with a colleague, a male and a female. And I remember very vividly being asked openly when you go into meetings, uh, and our colleague Mara was asked, Il Amura Maha Kart? This kind of, uh, of interactions. So I hate to say I, I'm too old. Huh? It's very long, 93. But uh, I know every generation tells the generation after it, it's easier now than it was my time. I know my parents told me this. I'm telling you this and it will go on. But really, entrepreneurship is much easier in Egypt today. At least there is something called VC. When we had to take our first loan, because there were no VCs, we raised our money by actually visiting our friends' parents, because these were the only people potentially giving us money. We raised a million pounds in 1996 to start Link. And at that point, there was no valuations. So a million pounds bought you 100% of the company. Yeah? So you guys are much, much <laughs> luckier. So we had to put our share there. So we moved on from there and I think done a lot of different things and it was very exciting and I think entrepreneurs are great people and I think they generate one of the most important things a country like Egypt needs, which is jobs. It's our role as entrepreneurs to build companies, grow them, hire people, pay taxes and hopefully this, comp this country one day will be much better. So when I saw that how much this environment changed and how much now there is hype and how much now entrepreneur is a cool thing, like a lot of people are entrepreneurs, but so are entrepreneur. So I felt, okay, guys, there is a lot of good momentum, but there is a lot of bubble-like feeling. So I wanted to share with you like, okay, it's a great thing to be an entrepreneur, but you have to be really doing something. So actually today, uh, Walking around there, I met a, uh, a colleague, let's say, a fellow entrepreneur, I don't know him. And he stopped me and he said, look, I was doing this startup with a guy in Dubai, and you called him, and after you, you, your mentorship session with him, he decided not to partner with me. So I was like, yes, okay, this is not going to be a fun discussion. And I said, uh, can you remind me? And yes. So I'll tell you, no names, but basically he owns a software development company. He was partnering with this other guy as his CTO on an app, and he would buy from his own business. And I think that structure really embodies all what I don't like about what's going on in our ecosystem. We have an amazing ecosystem. We have great entrepreneurs, but we're trying to be too smart. We're trying to do too many things. The investors who invest in you, as an investor, I will diversify. I don't expect you as an entrepreneur to diversify. I don't think there is more commitment or less diversification when, than when Zuckerberg left Harvard. Or when Bill Gates again left Harvard. Or when the Google guys or the Yahoo guys dropped out of Stanford. Why? Because they committed 110% of their life, and of their energy to make their startup successful. So yes, we have a good ecosystem, but we have a lot of noise around. And if we don't quantify what's working and what's not working, the next time we might do the wrong thing. So the idea is to be consciously competent entrepreneurs, meaning we should know what we're doing right and why are we growing and why we're moving forward. When we go to people and ask them to give us money, because I think this is a big theme around here, okay, investors, and we, please, we want you to invest. We need to put ourselves in their shoes. We need to think, okay, how does this VC make his money? Because if I don't make him money, 
guess what? He will not start by giving me the money I need. And I think this is our, one of our biggest issues is we have this no man's land. We have a lot of incubators, uh, angels, seed, and then we have late stage investors. And in the middle, in Egypt today, it's a bit empty. So what do I mean by quantifying? I mean, when you come and meet an investor, you need to think, how is my business doing? What are the metrics I can, can show to this guy to show that my business is growing? Because the worst pitch you can hear is, once you give me money, I'll take your money, do a lot of marketing, and my site will grow, or my downloads will grow. If you can generate basic momentum without the money, you probably are not worth the money. Okay? So, okay, if, if I'm quantifying, if I'm counting, and so on, then I should go and find the right investor. So, I'm not saying that because we're an investor and then, you know, big signs say I am the right investor. I'm not. For some investment, I am. For others, I'm not. You need to understand what do you need from this investor. Do you want his money? Clearly, because all investors give you money. But that's the lowest common denominator. What do you want more? So there is this company that I think is here today. And we're very happy to be one of their investors called Kijami, for example. When we... <laughs> So when we invested with them, I think we gave them the lowest valuation, if I'm not wrong. So everybody said, guys, don't take their money. You'll be stupid. Don't do They were stupid enough, intelligent enough, lucky enough. You call it whatever you want to call it. They decided that the amount of support that they can get from people like us will be good enough for them. So they were willing to get in what we thought was the right valuation to grow. And this year, they promised me that we will get dividends from them that's equal 15 times, one five dividends, 15 times what we invested with them four years ago. So there, I think we both made the right bet. We helped them grow their business to be that big, but also they enticed us to get in. And this is where I think our ecosystem needs to look at. How can I be really numbers focused, really quantifying where I'm going. It's like, I always say it's like when you're driving going to Alexandria. You have to keep seeing Alexandria on 90, Alexandria on 80, Alexandria on 70. If it's 210, you're probably going in the right, di wrong direction. You probably need to change. And that's another issue I'm seeing with our ecosystem. How many startups closed in this country? Very few. And you know, in the valley and everywhere else, they say if you fail, fail fast. Great guys have failed 10 times. It's not a shame to fail. We have failed. We've invested in company where they went bankrupt. We've invested in company where we have decided to close down because they were flatlining. We invested in company where our co-investors stole our money and we're suing them and hopefully one day they'll go to jail. But anyway, we invested in others that made us a lot of money. So what you learn is stop wasting your energy and go to the right direction. If the ecosystem is healthy and is quantifying properly and moving in the right direction, you'll hear about a lot of startups, a lot of seed, a lot of series A, a lot of exits, and a lot of closures. Because this is a business that's very high risk. We cannot have a business that's been there for 10 years or five years or even three years that's flatlining. I'm not growing, but once I get your money next year, I'll be blown. No, it will not work. I think I am an investor that's very stubborn, that's very persistent. So I'm not telling you give up because I'll be stupid to stand in here today and tell you give up. I'm telling you the exact opposite. I'm saying just give up on wasting your energy. Make sure you're going with your business to the right direction. I'm having an app or I'm having a, a, a transaction-based business. I need to ensure that my business is always generating more momentum, is always growing. And I'm not only comparing to myself, I'm comparing to the market. And people who've worked with us understand that very well. We always compare to competition. You can't come and tell me I have this best app doing so and so, and it's great. Okay, great, please pass by. We're, we, we're very interested to invest with you. And then you see a line that's doing like this. Say, guy, but you have not been growing for the last six months. Actually, you've been declining a bit. Ah, a bit. Because our investment is uh, delayed, and if you give us the money, we'll spend it and we'll grow great. Okay, fine. How much money do you want? X. A hundred. Why? Because we think the business in two years or three years can be worth 200. And you'll double your money if you invest with me. If a VC invests with you to double his money, means he's an idiot. Why? Because eight out of 10 startups either go bankrupt or don't do well. So if I give you $1, 
to get me back to. So if I have 10, I'll invest in 10 companies. Eight will go bankrupt. Two will double, I'll have four. So in two rounds of investment, I will also go <laughs> bankrupt. So basically, the idea, no, why do you want to make five or 10 times your money, Mr. VC? You're crazy. No. If, if, if we're all agreeing it's a startup ecosystem, I want to do five to 10 times, because if two make five to 10, I'll make 10 to 20. Two will do semi-okay, will get me back my two, so I'll be between 12 to 22, which is a fair number, and the rest will die. And if you look, at uh, no matter which startup, all of them had this, uh, how do you call it, brushed with this. So even Airbnb, I was reading, they, ha they were having a very interesting interview in, in, Sta in a Stanford class, and they were talking about how the business went almost bankrupt twice, and they were funding the business by credit cards and so on. So now it's an X billion dollar business. And when they asked them, why did he continue to fight? Why did he continue to put your own money behind it? Their answer was simple. Every city we went to, every people we talked to, we found that our customers were coming in and sending us more customers. So they found this momentum. They could quantify something that could continue to grow. And then they built around it. It was not about the startup ecosystem is very nice. We're all very happy. We meet for breakfast every week and we have this uh, crazy nice guy who comes and tells us a lot of jokes. That's the great part of the ecosystem. That's why we work all in startups and, and you know, in this ecosystem, not a big corporate where everybody is in a tie and you can hardly please. But that's not the core of it. The core of it is building a business that you believe in and you understand everything about that business. So when you go into the meeting with your VC, you can tell him competition, you can tell him why people will be using you and you can tell him how every day in the morning you'll have a sheet of paper or an Excel sheet or a HTML page where you would look at it and count your way to success. Ensure that you are going the 170, 150, 120, five kilos and then succeed. And actually at that point when we started discussing with a lot of startups and saw this flatlining, we ourselves during at, at the A15 level or at Accelero deciding to shut down some businesses because we felt it's also our mistake we have to also be courageous enough to stand in front of you and say, we've invested in business, we messed up, other people did much better, they are growing, bravo alayhum, I'll shut that business and I'll go do something else. Last thing, investor will invest in you and in your commitment more than in your idea. So if you're committed, then your business can pivot. Then business as Airbnb will move from air mattresses to a multi-billion dollar business. Then a business from Microsoft that started wanting to do a compiler will pivot and become an operating system. Why? Because the team was strong enough, coherent enough, and determined enough to do the right thing. On the note of the team, ensure you get a team that complements you. So again, when you quantify, you have to look at, okay, I am very good in business. Then I need a very good technical guy. Then we need a third guy who will be able to count the money. So one of my partners at Link in 96, we always were fighting, always. He never wants to spend money, and I always wanted to spend too much money. And this fight was always useful because we always ended up spending the right amount of money. So find partners that will complement you, will complement your talent, will complement you're thinking, not partners that exactly are like you, like the exact same thing, and will do the exact same stuff because they will not add value. There'll be two of you instead of one. Again, I think the ecosystem is amazingly exciting this time. So with all the negative stuff I said, it's just because I love it. Because I started doing this in 96 when people were making fun of entrepreneurs, when they would tell you you're an entrepreneur because nobody would employ you. I think now at least people understand what we're doing. I think now the country is waiting for us to help them by really creating this job, by creating this excitement. We just have to ensure we're going in the right direction and enjoy the journey. And I always like to close my speeches with this quote, success is a journey, not a destination. So I really wish you all to enjoy your journey. Thank you very much.